Hello everyone, today we will continue with the wiring. So first I will prepare the end stops lever. For the Z end stop we need to remove this lever. So for that it's basically snipped on its place. You can see these small pieces it's holding inside here. So you just need to press from the both end and it's easily removable then. And for the Z end stop again we will use normal closed one. You can use also normal open one. And then you can configure the config but I will strongly suggest you to normally <coughs> close one because it's fail safe. What does that mean? Let's demonstrate the continuity test. And with that we can check also our end stop. So it should be written on your switch c is for common and all for normal open normal open and nc for normal close so we will use normal close and this normal close contact is a closed circuit until the switch is pressed that means that if your wire is broke somehow like this it will also uh, trigger the motherboard and it will stop your uh, z-axis in this switch case so but in normally open it's not working like that in normally open when you press it it's becoming closed circuit so broken wire doesn't trigger anything in here so just use normal close one to be on safe side for the Z end stop this is the bracket and there is a logo on the front part turn it and the switch button look downside because the bed will come with the screw and hit the, this one but switch should be located like this since this is uh, not in the center the switch should be placed like that like this position the switch also should be in the right side so we will use m2 by 10 self tapping screw which now should be placed like that in here so for that we will use M3 by 10 I will slide it a little bit tricky this bracket should be mounted about 2 mm low at the end of this frame Now we will place the X and Y on the X we will place in here and for the X we are only putting one self tapping screw the motor, stepper motor is in the way it's a little bit hard while the tool head is installed so maybe you want to you may want to install before putting the tool head or motor but it's manageable and be careful about the orientation I think it does matter, I'm not sure. So I am doing how it's shown in the manual. So the as you can see with this orientation I put. And the last one, Y and stop. And Y and stop is positioned like this. So let me if I turn over you will not see so let me put it first and I will show you and this one should hit our screw yeah we didn't adjust this one but yeah hitting it and, uh, and yeah the orientation of the Y and stop is like that yeah the lever is here orientation is like that 
Now we will put the back panel. So, a tricky thing. Slide it like this. Of course, first let me arrange the nuts. Sometimes nuts are stuck in the blind joints, so you need to give a push. So let's do that. So two of them here, and one of them is here hiding. Okay, and we will use M3 by 6 to secure it. Now we will align the panel with the frames, make it in the middle, then tighten the screws. And this notch is for the ZN stop cables. So we will pass the cable through the notch. One of them is here, and yeah, okay, here it's a little bit hidden. So don't forget to select the correct voltage input before you use if your outlet is if you are out of this 220 to 220 230 you should select the 230 otherwise it should be 115 it's a little bit hidden in here so but don't forget to select the correct one so mine is 230 and this one is connected with the hp tape i'm not a fan of it but since they are using it they should be okay but again, I still prefer screwing it. However, I don't have that option. So at least I will clean the surface to stick it better. I installed the motherboard and the Raspberry Pi. This is the orientation that is also shown in the <coughs> manual. And for the Raspberry Pi, it's used M2 by 10 self-tapping screw to bracket and for the motherboard you need to use m3 by 6 i have also put the power supply and the uh, buck converter so there is already two nuts in here which is preloaded and with m3 by 6 i put this one and this one is just sticking and yeah let's continue i finished the wiring first let's start with the mains wire so i'm using mode by the way i will put its link so in this mode it's the skirt mode and uh, this power input is placed on the skirt nice one and uh, in your power input you should connect your switch to your power input so i used thicker cable by the way and color coded it so this is the live wire which is coming from here and passed through the fuses and this is the output of the fuse so out from output of the fuse I'm going to one of the uh, legs of the switch from the other leg of switch I'm going via this route I am going to do my live input so this is the live input and it's the same for neuter but neuter there is no fuse on the neuter line so your neutral line is go to the switch and the other leg of the switch from the other leg of the switch I'm going to do neutral wire and the earth connection is correctly is done to the power supply we will add also a uh, bed wire in here I didn't install bed yet so once I installed I will do the wiring also for this and uh, another, th another thing is as you can see this Z motor has switch uh, sorry mm, Z motor has a socket but they there was no cable for it I wrote a message them for the this issue uh, I hope they will include in the later patch so and I don't have this uh, proper connector it's like a JST but the dimensions are different so I don't have it so what did I I just to the pont connector on this side and i refer the motors on my v2 so i used from left to right i used first third fourth and sixth leg and after that i connectorize the 
this part and plug the motherboard. So I, like I said, I refer the the same brand of motor on my V2. So I also check the color and so it's going in on a sequence and it's also going in on a sequence in here. If you have same issue, I would advise to use the ribbon cable. It will be easier to sort things out. And for now, uh, I left it like that, but it's not safe. It's easily pulling out. So first I will check this one is working. Is there something wrong with my cables or motor or something? After that, I will fill this connector with silicone. So that will hold the, uh, the pond connectors. Yeah. From the 24 output, first I am going to the buck converter, then for the from the second I am going to the motherboard. So in the buck converter, yeah, let's move on the low current wiring. So there is a buck converter in here. So with via USB I am feeding the Raspberry Pi, and again it's coming the 24 from the PSU. I am feeding the SCR board. I did all the wiring, <clears throat> like I said, and yeah, this USB cable is a little bit messing around, but yeah, I think there will be no issue. I didn't connectorize my tool head in here or in or in here. The thing is, it's there's no drag chain. First of all, second of all, I can change the wiring easily if something wrong from the tool head, and it's not as you know, it's not changeable tool head like in V2. In tool head basically I just soldered the cooling fans together in here and put one silicone wire and also I put silicone wire for the patent fan because the cables were, were short and I'm the rest for the rest and of course we have X and stuff and for this I'm using the original cables so I will sleeve this I will sleeve this with this spring thing and I think it will be okay for like I said before in the V2 also for the low current wiring just follow the manual it's really explained it will be easier following the manual than that I'm explaining to you for the mains wiring also you can follow the manual it's visualized in here also power input is shown in here yeah you can follow this it's well explained and yeah, again, if you want to explanation, you can check my V2 wiring videos in there. I'm explaining it's the same for the mains. It's the same. Basically, there is nothing different. And yeah, and here, by the way, we will put this. Let's check it. Yeah. And the only thing is remaining right now, the bed. I will put the bed and do the wiring. I also put the bed. So for the beds, for the beds, I got rid of this slaving of the red one. If you remember, as you can see, I cut these red sleeves because it was interfering the profile. Then after that, I just routed via the printed parts under here and go to the cable chain. And via cable chain, it's coming back to the back sides. From here, it's coming to motherboard, and this one is the earth connection. It's going to power supply uh, for the Z motors. I didn't get the cable, but like I said, I messaged the seller. I hope they will add the cable in the next patch. So what I did is I just put, uh, I don't have the, the small JST connector, so I just used the the pont connector in that side and I filled with the RTV also so right now it's, it's holding, it's rigid be careful about that in here if you don't get it also the cable they are providing the one page from the motor data ship so in here it's already explained but I was I didn't check unfortunately and I used my multimeter continuity test to determine the coils however in the in this page it's showing that the right order so you need to use first third fourth and sixth but be careful about one thing this three and four is uh three and four are twisted 
is also given the color scheme so use that one so the three and four actually are twisted and yeah like i said i put with the rtv and this is the motherboard and raspberry pi and the main side and the main side is like that this is our buck converter and the power supply so that was it for the wiring episode thank you for your time thank you for watching and we will do the commissioning in the next episode and see you in the next one